discussion. It's nice to meet you, Professor Jones, having read all your emails uh, <laughs> over the last few, few days. Um, I understand that the criticism from McIntyre and Mosher and Fuller and Hughes and, and other people is not that the data has been kept secret, uh, that it has been available on, on, on different data sets, uh, but your computer programs and methodology and which weather stations you've actually been putting into the papers has not been made available to them. That's the real criticism, isn't it? And, and why haven't you made uh, that information available? Because their criticism is they can't reproduce your work and agree with it or show uh, flaws in it if they haven't got those programs, the names of the weather stations, and all that information. And can I just as a writer say, that going back to Lord Lawson's uh, comments earlier, uh, that without the understanding of the methodology, <coughs> the peer review system is rather defunct. Well, the methods are published in the scientific papers. They're relatively simple. And there's nothing sort of in sort of rocket science in them. They're explained in the papers. Um, in terms of the, uh, the data itself, we had entered into some agreements with some red services to gain access to more data in certain parts of the world. And we put up those agreements on our website in, during this summer in response to some of the FOI requests. So we were trying to get more data in specific areas. But uh, after that um, sort of deluge of requests in July 2009, we contacted the Met Office and asked them how best it would be to try and move forward and release more of the data. So what we, we sent, we, we sent out some emails and letters to Met Services around the world um, in, in November, and we've got replies from many of those now. And through the auspices of the Met Office, we've now released 80% of the data on, on, on their website, together with a program that analyzes the data, produces the derived product, and <coughs> produces the global temperature average. May, may I point out, Chair, that it is a very small unit. There are three full-time members of academic staff within it, and the um, manned power involved in exactly what's just been described is actually very considerable. May I also point out that it is not a national archive, it is not a library, it is a research unit. It has no special duty to conserve, and its data is the copy of data provided by over 150 countries, which those national meteorological stations turn the data into the average for a month and then pass it. It is, it, there's no sort of primary well, We can't understand source. why you would not wish to publish it. That's the point. I, mean, oh, oh, the the only, point? It, I agree. I think the more it's published, the better, the better. So but why are you it? Well, uh, unfortunately, Jones several of these countries yes. impose conditions and say you're not allowed to pass it on. So there's just been an attempt to get these answers. Seven countries have said, no, you can't. Half the countries haven't yet answered. Canada and Poland are amongst those who said, no, you can't publish it. Also Sweden. And Russia is very hesitant. And we are under, actually, sort of um, a, a, a commercial promise, as it were, not to. We're longing to publish it. What science needs is the most open. Okay. okay. Well, why, can, I, sorry, can, I Professor, can Professor Jones answer the yeah. question I asked about the question being about the list of stations and the computer programs and the methodology? Not a, nobody's ever argued that the data wasn't available. Well, why can't your scientific papers, when they're published, why can't independent people check them for their validity? That isn't traditionally done. You publish the paper, you don't always make the data available, you don't always make the So we have to take use. everything you do on trust? No, because we've got the agreement with the other data sets that are but, produced but in... I'm a scientist. If I want to go and check your work as a scientist and make a name for myself by saying it's false in some way. I can't do it. Well, you can. We have made the, the, um, all the adjustments we've made to the data available in these reports. They are 25 years old now. Um, but and the program that produces the, the, the global temperature average has been available from the Met Office in, in, yeah, I think, I think in we're December. Missing, we're, missing, we're missing this key point. So can you just plug on? Well, um, I, I will plug on. Because, I mean, I've got one of the quotes from your emails here, which doesn't say, why should I make the data available to, to you when your aim is to try and find something wrong with it, to, to Hughes? That, that's your email. Yeah. Now, that's the, that's the nature 
of science, isn't it? That scientists make our reputations by improving or disproving what other scientists uh, have done previously. Your statement there seems to be anti-scientific, and the books that people have written around, around this issue uh, have persuaded me that you have not provided all the information that the programs, the weather stations, all the information available so that people can replicate your work. And saying that the data is freely available in the United States doesn't enable anybody to go through your workings and, and agree with you or disagree with you. Um, well, the, day, the list of stations we did Make, we did make that available in 2008, so that has been on our website. How long have people been asking for it at that time? Um, you were going since, back since to some papers in 1990, aren't you, that have been kept secret? No. There was a paper in 1990, and we were asked for the data for that paper, which I was talking about in the previous question. That was made, made available straight away. Um, the, the list of stations was made available after about six months from the first FOI request in early 2007. So you're saying that every paper that you have produced, the computer programs, the weather stations, all the information, the codes, uh, are, have, have been publicly available <coughs> to scientists, or available to scientists, so that they could test out how good your work was. Has that, is that the case on all the papers you've produced? That's not the case on... No, and why isn't it? Because it hasn't been standard practice to do that. But that takes me back to the original point, that if it's not standard practice, how can the science progress? Well, maybe it should be standard practice, but it's not standard practice across the subject. Well, can, can you explain, because I, I, I think a lot of people would like you to explain, if, as Professor Acton says, we want all this information out, can you explain uh, your, your email uh, to Hughes in, in, on the 21st of January 2005, when you said you aren't going to make the data available to him uh, because uh, he, he might, all he wants to do is find something wrong with it. That, that's the nature of scientific pursuit, isn't it? Uh, yes. I had, I've obviously written some very awful emails, and I, I fully admit well, that. That's very clear. Yes, it, it is. It's clear. absolutely clear denial of this man's attempt to get at what you were doing. Yes, and I had been in discussion with him for a number of months before that, trying to answer his questions. But he wanted, he wanted the data. He, he wanted the codes. He wanted all your information, and you refused to give it to him. Why? Because we had a lot of, of work and resources invested in it. That was way before the FOI request started. Well, it's, I'm not, I, yeah. it's, it seems to be an attitude. I, I, I see what I think. I, science shouldn't have to rely on individuals making freedom of information requests for other scientists to be able to get to, to data. I'm, I'm not really interested in that side. I'm interested in why uh, you have, both through the freedom of information request and to Hughes and, and uh, <coughs> to other scientists, why have you refused to give them the data? We, we have given them the gridded product so that we have the, don't, not the, the raw station data, but the product in, 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 in grid boxes on but a But they final. can't go back they, they can't, can't go, go back to the basics and as any scientist would want to and say, is this right? They can't you, you've denied them the right to check it. We have made the gridded product available from the from the very beginning, but not the raw station <coughs> data. And most scientists don't want to deal with the raw station data, they would rather deal with a derived product. Okay. We're moving on very quickly to very brief. Professor Jones, um, if you've provided the raw data, in broad terms but briefly, what have you withheld and why have you withheld? <coughs> um, we've, we've withheld the, the raw station data that we've used. The same, much the same data is available in the USA on this Global Historical Climatology Network. Um, and, we, and we've made a, available all the adjustments we've made to our data as well. Um, but, but what has not gone out, which has excited you know, these allegations of, 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 um, uh, of undue withholding, what has the, not gone the, out and why didn't it go out? It's the specific raw data that we used. We've always put out the gridded product and people can get the same, much the same raw data from other, other sites in the, in, in the USA. 
So it's redundancy is the motive. Then, is it? I mean, it's already it's already in the public.